Irene, um, what are your experiences with lobbying as compared to legislative work? And how do you feel about lobbying, especially in the Obama era? You know, they've made lobbying kind of a bad word. So. Um, in the Clinton administration, like I said, I had uh, different roles, but I was um, uh, a deputy assistant secretary for legislation. And while you know nobody would admit to this, what you're doing is you are you know, presenting the administration's view on their legislative priorities or on their, you know, working through the confirmation process. So you are advocating. So in effect, you are a lobbyist. Um, but, uh, so I've had a lot of experience doing that, but just from another side. Um, and when you're in an a, a, a appointee, you do lobbying a lot, even if, even if you're not in a legislative position. Um, there are policies that you're working on that you're trying to get Department to advocate for, you're trying to get the White House to agree with you, OMB to fund it. So there's a lot of sort of internal lobbying that you can do. Um, but I think just being on the outside now, it's just a different perspective um, to the, the process. Um, I always say when I left the White House, I want, I, there were still things I was working on, like the Filipino veterans of World War II, we just cut, um, signed executive order on LEP. And so there are a lot of things that I'm still working on that I wanted to continue doing. And, being on the outside, you can continue doing that. Um, you just work with different organizations, but you can still work on those um, uh, policy issues that are important to you. Thank you, Irene. Next question. This is Odell. You know, I try to get a low level uh, of one team from uh, the White House. I sent in my, I submitted my application. I never heard anything from them. Okay. You know, it's just too <laughs> wow. Um, you, um, how do I start this one? This particular administration, as you probably know, uh, there were hundreds of thousands of people that worked on the campaign, that contributed, that um, put in their applications. So we're really talking about hundreds of thousands. Okay. Now, understand that from the hundreds of thousands of applications, there are maybe 10,000 10, maybe jobs. Um, so, you know, there's a scale, right? Factor number one is the number, the sheer number. Factor number two is that, um, uh, as uh, Manu said a little bit earlier, this is still very early in the game, okay? Uh, I was talking to somebody over at the Department of Defense and they were saying, for example, that maybe 50% of their appointments are done, okay? So um, the, uh, this administration is being extremely careful about the vetting process. So if you're interested, if you are, you know, going, um, going for an appointment, uh, I would suggest that, you know, just, just hang on to your, your day job and, you know, <laughs> Okay. And I think that the, the, the other question that I would pose to you, Alex, because I know you're a federal employee, a careerist, is um, what do you think is the difference from being a political appointee, low-level political appointee, and a careerist? What difference would you make, uh, and why would you want to switch? Yeah, but you've been in the federal government for a long time. And if, look, let me tell you from my perspective, okay? I was in the federal government for 30 years. And um, my recommendation to a lot of the youngsters especially is that if you have a passion for service in, in, in the government and you want to make a long-lasting contribution, don't pass up the opportunity of serving as a career person. Because, you know, you contribute just as much. Okay. <laughs> you contribute just as much. And, um, you know, so, so you may want to like, kind of examine why it is that, you know, what, uh, uh, um, what is it that is going to be different for you if you became a political appointee as opposed to continuing in your current, you know, high level job. 
Uh, next question from Tom. And we need to thank Tom for The one we should uh, really thank is uh, Milan Ayubi, the owner of the 16, who has been a uh, long time supporter of uh, AAA. But actually, um, my qu uh, just a comment that was just, just related, I was thinking that it was sort of a, so you might say, kind of a, I say happy medium, but you know, I know of people who have had um, career employees who have done details. And, and one person that many of us here know very well, Paul Tio, uh, yeah. is an example of somebody who is, is, as a career employee, as an assistant U.S. attorney, spent a year on Capitol Hill, detailed to the Judiciary Committee for Senator Durbin, and is now doing a great detail with the, uh, as a special counsel to the FBI director. So I think that's something, one of the things I'd suggest to people who are career uh, employees is, Absolutely. you know, it's a great way to, and then, you know, you never know where they can lead to. Um, and just, and then a question, and maybe this is best to address to Irene, is um, uh, what sort of strategies for people who want to work on Capitol, looking for jobs at Capitol Hill, say they're coming from private practice, you know, they're lawyers, or, you know, whatever backgrounds they, you know, they have. Maybe they have no capital experience. Maybe they have some campaign experience. Maybe they did an internship. Maybe not. But you know, what are some strategies for people looking to break in? Um, what can you suggest? I think for a lot of jobs, um, it's, it's networking. And um, you know, if you ask me, do I know someone on the hill that you can talk to, and I introduce you to that person, and then hopefully they'll have five people that you can talk to, and. It's just putting your name out there, putting yourself out there, that you're available for this kind of, kind of work. Um, I know Howard Moon and I have had this conversation before about, you know, sometimes you have to start off as an intern. When I worked on Capitol Hill, I was a lawyer, and I started off as an intern because I was a lawyer with no Hill experience. So I was overqualified for the starting level jobs, but underqualified for council positions, but I did it. I, I had to do it, and so I, within a month, I found a job but it's something you have to do. So if you really want to work on Capitol Hill, you have to be willing to take that sacrifice. And interns do a lot of work. Um, they're very short staffed on Capitol Hill, and especially right now, there's a lot of work to do. So you could handle a whole you know, issue area um, if you uh, play your cards right and you know don't think it's a step down for you, you're too good for it. Um, and you know Howard said the same thing. He started out as an intern and then you know, worked with Speaker Pelosi. So, you know, you have to kind of decide for yourself how much, how badly you want it. And um, just, like I said, just putting yourself out there and telling everybody that you know that you want a job on Capitol Hill. So, my uh, job search on the Hill was really interesting, actually. Like, I had just uh, worked as a paralegal, so for some of the younger folks, this is relevant, but I had worked as a paralegal in the White House Counsel's Office, but then when Bush won, you know, I was out of a job. <laughs> And so, me, along with many other um, folk, I was kind of pounding the pavement looking for a job somewhere. And I ended up take, taking and getting very lucky and working for Senator Leahy on judiciary as a staff assistant. And I, you know, I did that. And just like your story, like I was willing to do whatever it took to kind of get my foot in the door and do what it takes. And you know, they, they made fun of me, you know, because I wasn't from Vermont, so I really didn't know many of the cities and many of like areas. And I was the Illinois guy. <laughs> But you know, I mean, it's really all about, I think, especially when you're so young, getting your foot in the door and trying to show your worth and making the context necessary to um, advance. And so you have to be patient, I think, and just realize that it's just such a great opportunity working in Congress. There's so much going on, so many opportunities to really shape public policy that, you know, everyone plays a role and you're on the team. And even if you're an intern, staff assistant, you should jump at the chance, I think. 